Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson I'm going to demonstrate a great new feature in Excel 2007, Tables. We're going to convert a traditional data range, sometimes called a list, into an Excel 2007 table. I've listed five benefits and I'll show you each of these benefits in this lesson. Let's create our table. We'll select one cell inside our data range. Go to the Insert tab of the ribbon and over here in the Tables group, select Table. Notice the keyboard shortcut, Control T. That's another way to create the table. Let's confirm the dimensions for our table. So you see when it finds, when Excel finds the first blank row, the first blank column, it determines that's the range. And we also have headers. Click OK. Now, wow. First and foremost, notice the formatting we have what's called alternate row formatting. If we want to change it, that's easy. We come up to one of the new tabs on the ribbon. So when we select a cell inside the table, we get a contextual table tools design tab. And we can take advantage of live preview to see what our table would look like using a different color, a different sh uh, shading. Let's select this one. All right, now before I go any further, Here's another best practice. Table Tools Design. Come over here in the Properties group, and rather than using this generic name for the table, Table 10, let's call this Banking. Now, when you name a table, it must begin with a letter, and it cannot contain any spaces. And remember to hit the Enter button when you finish typing the name for your table. Let's demonstrate the first benefit. With Excel 2007 tables, we can automatically expand horizontally or vertically. So if I want to add an additional column over here, I can do that. Let's add a field, a column, for the average transaction. I'll just call it average. So notice that now the dimensions of the table have automatically expanded. It's great for adding records. So when I create a pivot table, I first create an Excel table because this way if I need to add additional records, my table name for the pivot table is automatically uh, increased to show those additional records. All right, now here's one that you have to see to believe. Natural language formulas that will get copied down the column. What I want to do here for the average is I want to use a formula to take the amount divided by the number of transactions. Now notice the natural language that's used in this formula. So this table that we now rename banking in this row, go to the field called amount and then divide that by the field in this row called transactions. Now watch when I hit control enter. Watch how the formula is automatically copied down. Wow, does that save you time. Now also notice that we have filters that have been added to our column headers. And I'll come back to filters in just a bit. I want to demonstrate another feature called total rows. So what we can do is we can add in a total row. Let's use control N to get down to the bottom of our table. And again, make sure that your cell is inside the table. Come over here into the Table Tools, and in the Table Styles options, select the Total Row. So now we have a new row for totals that's added at the bottom. And in our rightmost column, we have a calculation, and in this case, it's using the SUM function. So I can come over here into any one of the cells in the total row, and in the dropdown, choose any function that I want. Now this is really great when we are using filters because instead of using sum or instead of using average, it's using the subtotal function. So when we filter the records, we'll get the total for the filtered selection. All right, let's use Control Home to come up here to the top. And now let's come over and take a look at the improved filtering that we get. Over here in column A, we have dates. So new filters that have been added in here are date filters. So if I want to filter this data set to only see those records for this month, I just select that. And now I'm only seeing the records in the current month. Now remember with that totals row, I'll do control end. So now the number down here, because we're using the subtotal function, is giving me the total for just the records that are on view.
So notice this number over here begins with 259. When I come back here and I remove the filter, then notice how that number will change. So in this case, I'm going to clear the filter. I'll use Control End, and you see how the number has changed down there. So we also have filters that we can use for text and also filters that we can use for numbers. So over here on the amount, this is one that I particularly like above average. So we can see above average, below average, or top 10. Top 10%, top 5%, top 5 items, top 50, whatever. So here for the above average, it's a great filter that we can see over there. And I'll clear this filter. So we have automatically expanded the columns or the records, natural language formulas that get automatically copied down total rows which use the subtotal function so we can see the amount when we filter. We have seen the improved filtering using date filters, text filters, number filters, and the improved formatting. So there you've seen five reasons why you should consider converting an existing data range or a list into an Excel 2007 table. And I'll see you in the next lesson.